This module is going to be on introduction to parallel programming in OpenMP and MPI. And my name is uh, Yogesh Sabarwal. I lead the Cognitive Computing Platforms group at IBM Research India. Uh, we basically look at how to optimize scientific applications and algorithms on massively parallel systems. I have done extensive work on you know parallelization and optimization of uh, scientific applications such as weather modeling codes, finite element analysis, and so on. And uh, also, we've looked at optimizing algorithms and benchmarks such such as the HPC challenge benchmarks, various graph algorithms, and also uh, you know deep deep learning uh, frameworks. <coughs> so uh, we have expertise in various IBM platforms such as. The IBM BlueJean supercomputer, the power-based HPC systems, cell processors, and also a lot of parallel programming on GPUs. So, uh, what is parallel computing, right? So, parallel computing means uh, doing things simultaneously. So, what what are we doing simultaneously? We might be doing the same thing or something a uh, different set of things simultaneously, right? For exa example, when you are uh, driving a car. Right, you might be driving at the same time. You might be talking on the phone. Not a great idea, but it might be happening, right? And at the same time, you're breathing as well, right? So you, all these things are happening in parallel. They're happening simultaneously, right? So that is one form of parallel computing. So in this case, what you're doing is different, right? You're doing three different things at the same point in time. Now, in different situations, you could be doing the same thing, right? When you're exercising, uh, maybe you're putting your hands up uh, and so on, right? So you're performing the same action in parallel. So, uh, when we do things simultaneously, we may be doing the same thing or different things. Uh, but what is the important point in parallel computing? We are doing, we are solving one large problem. I mean, for instance, at this point of time, you are breathing and I might be, uh, you know, writing something on, on a piece of paper, but that we don't generally call that parallel computing because we are completely doing two separate things which are not related to each other at all, right? So, in parallel computing, generally we refer to uh, the scenario where we are trying to solve one large problem and while solving that problem, we are doing things simultaneously. Okay, so in serial computing, basically the problem is broken down into a stream of instructions, and then these instructions are executed sequentially one after the other on a single processor, right? And the important point is that only one instruction is executed at a time, at a given point in time, right? And now when you move to parallel computing, what changes? So in parallel computing, the problem is broken down into multiple parts that can be solved concurrently simultaneously, right? So you have to break down your problem into different parts. And each part now is further divided into a stream of instructions which can be executed on a processor, right? One by one. So the important part over here, what differentiates it from serial computing is that you are executing different instructions of the different parts simultaneously, right? So if you look at galaxies, planetary motions, uh, how the brain functions, how the weather modeling is done, how the traffic moves, right? All of these uh, real world phenomena are parallel by nature, right? So these are complex interrelated events that are happening simultaneously. So it makes sense if you, if you want to model them, then it makes sense to do the simulation in parallel. And why do we want to use parallel computing? Because first of all, it saves time. We produce the results in reasonable amount of time so that they are useful to us, right? For instance, suppose that we are doing weather modeling. So today when we try to do weather modeling, right, at, at a good resolution, let's say at a, a 10 cross 10 kilometer resolution for a region like India, right? Then uh, the weather simulation itself can take, uh, you know, if you uh, run it on a single processor, it can take days to run, right? So what is the point of that? If you are predicting tomorrow's weather and it takes you three days to predict that weather, it's of no use to you, right? So you want to be, you want your results to be useful. And if you can't do them on a serial computer, then you have to uh, basically use parallel computing. But the other uh, issue is that there are many problems that are interesting to scientists and engineers. When you do any simulation, you basically want to do it at a very high resolution, right? Uh, so if you want to do it at a very high resolution, then there's a lot of data involved. And uh, this data generally doesn't fit in the memory of a single computer, of a uh, PC. So what do you do? Either you can store it on the secondary storage on the disk and you know keep on fetching it and your algorithm has to uh, somehow run in parts, right? Or the other option is that you use a parallel computer. In parallel computing, uh, you have multiple nodes, you have memory associated with every node and therefore the, the total memory that is available to you is much larger. So you can load the 
entire data that you have on the combined memory that the systems have. The other issue is that the processors are not getting any faster. The clock frequency is not improving anymore. And the primary reason is that there are heat dissipation issues and power consumption issues. So what does that mean? That means that uh, you have to resort to parallel computing, right? You, you're not going to get more speed out of the same processor, so you have to use multiple processors. Where do we use parallel computing? So uh, scientific computing is one huge area where uh, parallel computers are used. Uh, this is primarily to solve numerically intensive simulations. Uh, so I'll, I'll come back to this. This is one of the most important areas. I'll, I'll cover this in more detail. But other than this, parallel computing is used heavily in database operations and for information systems, right? So for instance, uh, web-based services, they're made scalable. Uh, so there are so many requests coming into web servers these days. They have to be load balanced. They have to be sent to different servers. The computations have to be done in parallel. Uh, web search engines, online transaction processing, right? Just imagine the number of requests that uh, credit cards or uh, these other companies that are doing transactions, right? So all of them have to be done in parallel, right? Uh, then there are other systems like client inventory, database management systems, data mining, uh, online transaction processing, MIS systems, and so on. Then another area is artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning, right? So again, these areas are making heavy use of uh, parallel computing. If you look at uh, something like neural networks, right? So there are lots of nodes which are getting inputs, they're doing some computations and then uh, producing some new uh, output which is then consumed by other nodes, right? So it's a graph, layered graph and uh, lots of nodes are doing computations in parallel. So all of this, uh, you know, is very amenable to parallel com uh, computing. And then there are other areas like real-time systems and control applications uh, where this is used heavily. So coming back to scientific computing, uh, right? So that's, that's one of the focus areas where uh, high performance computing systems or massively parallel systems are uh, majorly used. So for instance, in engineering, right, uh, in car development. Uh, so as you know, right, these car companies, they are required to pass certain safety tests. So for instance, they have to ensure that if the car crashes into a wall at a certain speed with a dummy sitting inside the car, what is the impact on the dummy? They have, they have to show that, you know, it's uh, limited or no impact. So, so what does that involve? Uh, that actually involves uh, actually crashing the car into a wall. But that is costly, right? If let's say you're trying to build that car, you're not going to ca crash that car every uh, every second day into the wall just to see that whether the dummy is getting hurt or not, right? So again, this is actually done via simulations. So you use parallel computing again because the simulations are very compute intensive and it can take very long. So you want to use parallel computing. And you actually do these simulations uh, on the computers first and once you're satisfied or you're reasonably sure that uh, you know it's it's okay now that's when you actually take an actual car and go crash it into the wall uh, similarly in in aerospace it's very very important to understand uh, what is the effect of the wind or turbulence on the wings of an aircraft right all of that is done via simulations in nanotechnology for material design for instance if you're trying to design some uh, glue you want to figure out what is the right mix of chemicals that you have to use what are the properties that it will have? A lot of this is done uh, via material design using parallel computing. Uh, disaster prevention and uh, global environment. So things like weather modeling, tsunami prediction, cloud analysis, right? All of these are uh, very compute intensive simulations, right? Involving lots of physical and chemical processes that need to be uh, simulated. Then in life sciences for drug design and so on, it is used heavily uh, for nuclear uh, reactor analysis. So you want to simulate the nuclear reactions, right? What will happen in astrophysics uh, to figure out um, the formation processes for the Milky Way or the planet formation processes and so on, right? You, uh, you figure out so that these are the laws that should apply, but you want to simulate to figure out that that is actually what happens, right? So these are uh, some of the predominant areas where uh, parallel computing is used in scientific computing. So how do you actually go about using parallel computing in, uh, in, in scientific computing? So basically you start with some physical processes, like for instance, you want to study the airflow around an airplane, right? And then you build some mathematical models to do the simulation, right? So for instance, uh, you model it using Navier-Stokes equations, and then you basically solve that, right? So solving it involves basic uh, various numerical solutions, so that involves lots of algorithms and, you know, using lots of solvers. And that is very, very compute intensive, right? Lots of numerical equations have to be solved. Scientists and engineers are becoming more and more uh, ambitious. So they want to, uh, you know, do it at a very high resolution. 
uh, with lots of grid points. So that makes it very, very compute intensive. And finally, once the output is produced, you want to visualize that data. And after you validate it, you figure out the physical insights, you may want to go back and modify your models and so on, right? So uh, the numerical solution and the visualization is, is the part that heavily uses parallel computation, right? So here are some interesting facts about parallel computing. So people actually study the, uh, they simulate the explosion of a nuclear weapon. And from the moment that the button is pressed to the point that, you know, the bomb detonates. Actually, in, in real time, that happens in few billions of a second. But if you want to simulate that process, even supercomputers today take uh, weeks to replicate that process. Okay, it's that compute intensive. And another fun fact, Pringle potato chips, right? Uh, they have to actually use supercomputing capabilities, parallel computing to do simulation, what rate to have the assembly line move, because if they move it too fast, then the chips are going to fly off the assembly line, right? So they have to do all those studies and they do that using uh, supercomputing capabilities. 